man, super stable, guys. I mean, I don't even almost feel like I'm gonna roll this guy over. It's freaking awesome. Just even moving up to the front, very nose to grab this cat camera was pretty simple. You got a real high seating position, so it's really easy to get up to the up position. I think that's the hardest part. Seat. <laughs> A lot more, a lot more comfortable than I thought it was going to be. This is a very soft seat. I really like it. The handle is positioned perfectly um, for for ease of use. The steering is almost immediate for response. Turning around to deploy the rudder was no big deal. It's really simple to do. Didn't feel unstable. Man, I like it. It's uh, so far so good. It seems to be moving pretty quick, which is something I was hoping for. Um, it does feel like it's gonna it's gonna drift really fast. So if you're a drifter, be prepared for a fast drifting boat. Right now we're it was 70% chance of rain all day today. I had a guided trip this morning, but had to make the call yesterday since these people were coming from out of town. And um, man. Missed, missed on that one but the positive is is that i get to get out and test this boat like i've been wanting to do since we got it in so stay tuned hopefully we can get a fish or two on the board to see its fishability and um i'm hoping for the best all right guys
right, so one little issue so far, not a big deal in my opinion, but it's a little noisy. Um, it's almost like a surfboard no nosy, noisy. So, you know, you got that nose of that surfboard that makes a little bit of that foamy, hollow, slappy sound when you're surfing, if you've ever surfed. It's kind of the same thing. Um, check it out. Like I said, not a deal breaker, but just a little, little different from what I'm used to. So far, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So as it relates to shallow flats, you know, that's always a big deal, especially for us here in the coastal bend, Laguna Madre area. How shallow does this boat go when you're, when you're pedaling? And um, if you look down, I'd say we're probably sub foot and I'm feeling a little grass on the blades, but I'm actually using turbo fins. This boat comes with standard kick up fins. I'm using my turbo fin drive um, just to check it out. And um, man, it seems to be doing really well on the skinny. So I like the fact that it is, it is getting pretty shallow considering um, it's kind of a flat board. So stay tuned. What's your first impression of the boat, Jared? Uh, it's great, super nimble, um, really light to move around. I really like how the uh, the little uh, how you steer it is really close to where where your leg is, so it's really easy to steer. Um, everything on it's great so far. Uh, I'm gonna stand up on it here in a few minutes and see how the sight casting is off of it, but it seems everything's great. How's the seat feel? The seat is awesome, super comfortable. Uh, I would say it's more comfortable than an outback seat. To be honest, good deal. Getting out on that new Lynx from Hobie was something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So I'm just glad that I'm finally having the opportunity to do it and kind of share this with you. Now understand guys, this is just my opinion. You know, this is just how I felt about myself being on the actual boat itself. So you know, everybody's different. Everybody's gonna have different ideas of how they felt being on that boat. And, um, but um, you know, just, I know people have kind of been waiting for you know some kind of uh, response on the water and, and hopefully I can give them an accurate and honest one so all I'm gonna do guys is talk about the highlights and then the opportunities with the boat okay so I'll start with I'll start with the opportunities and what I found were you know were opportunities I mean I think every boat out there whether it be Hobie, Hoodoo, Jackson I mean you name it wilderness and I can go on and on every boat has its pluses and its minuses and and you know there's no perfect boat i mean i've been on some great boats that were missing on some areas and been on some uh, really expensive boats that have missed in some areas and very you know inexpensive boats and so you know i, I don't think there's a perfect boat i think they're all great and i'm, I'm happy to uh, be able to share uh, some of the knowledge i've had and experiences i have working on these boats so guys opportunities i felt like you know you guys saw it the biggest thing was is it was a little loud you know, just having that real hollow, you know, uh, surfboard sound, you know, not a game changer. It wasn't that big of a deal, but something different that I haven't, that I hadn't heard on other kayaks. And, you know, I, I think that if you had some considerable chop, it would be a little noisy, um, which, you know, could impact some of your fishing. If you're not into fishing, who really cares about the sound, you know? I, it didn't bother me enough to say, you know, this is a boat that I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't purchase. Um, you know, if I was doing a very, you know, high level tournament, would I, 
you know, would I be dissuaded from using that boat because of the sound that it makes? No, absolutely not. I mean, I think, um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, some of the other things that I thought, I, I, I definitely think that this boat is not uh, a BTB boat or Beyond the Breakers or Offshore Kayak. Um, you know, is it something you can mothership out there? Yeah, but I think getting through the breakers and coming back could be a, a major opportunity for that boat just based on on the shape and the overall feel of that boat. I don't think that, you know, for our conditions here on the coastal bend, it probably wouldn't do well. Um, but if I was taking a boat out there to the rigs or whatever with that boat on, um, you know, mothershipping that boat out there to that structure, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Um, the other things that I thought were kind of, you know, opportunities, there's no storage. And, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, if you are a very, you know, simple, um, no frills, uh, you know, minimalist, if you will, you know, this is probably the, a really good boat for you. The only storage is behind the seat. You know, there's a little pocket back there. I thought that was pretty cool. But there's no hatches, there's no entry into the hull. I think it's a solid hull. Um, you know, there's really no way to get into the hull. There's no way to cut a hatch in the hull, not that I know of. Um, but there are some op uh, there's some options out there. Obviously, you've got your crate and your H crates, and you know, you've got the opportunity to install rails on it. So if you want to add some kind of storage bins on the rails, that's that's definitely available for you. If it were me, I would leave the boat exactly the way it is and just use my trusty old H crate. Okay. Um, so overall, I mean, those I think were are probably the biggest opportunities with the boat. Um, you know, I really didn't feel um, there really wasn't really under any other negatives. I, I, this may be a negative. I tried to drift fish. I think this boat is going to drift extremely fast. I mean, even though I tested it in some very low winds, um, I think it's going to be a very, very fast drifter. So adding H rails with a big drift sock might be might be the right thing to do, you know. Um, positives now let's go from you know some of the opportunities to the highlights man the biggest thing is the weight the weight of that boat is awesome I mean I've never had a kayak that stable be that light you know which was was huge for me then which was huge for me um, I can potentially see myself you know as a guide on kayaks you know pretty much using those exclusively um, just because of the ease of, of the ease of st you know s stacking them storing them staging them putting them out on the water i mean it's and i can just think of the possibilities you know even if i want a mothership on my little skiff you know i think that would be easy to do uh, considering the weight of those boats um other positives was was a seat man i i couldn't get it over how soft and nice that seat was i mean super comfortable i think it's even more comfortable than the ctw seat that's on the outback um really really nice seat i was very shocked you know we'll see how long it lasts um but I, that was pretty damn cool and the other things that the boat was pretty quick i mean considering i guess maybe the weight had something to do with it very quick um very stable um you know it was just an overall nice comfortable boat i was a little you know when i first saw you know months and months ago kind of some initial renderings of the boat you know i thought that maybe the um the rudder would be a little suspect with the click and go you know being able to take it off and remove it man but that was it, it's, it's a nice rudder and, and, the, and the boat steers very very well it paddles well being able to take that rudder off and stack boats i could see that being a really really huge selling point and um man the stability i mean you know very very stable ride you know i'm between 220 230 pounds um and i had no concerns about you know feeling that i was going to fall off the boat or anything like that so you know i think those positives were, were huge and it's not an all-around vessel it's not an offshore vessel I think it'd be great for you know lakes, rivers, inshore fishing, um, and, you know, and go out there and try it offshore. I, I don't think it's unsafe, you know, from it you know taking on water or anything. I just feel like it, it'd be very very difficult to get it in, especially if if the surf's pretty rough. Okay, so man, I, I'm so excited to have it to have this boat. I'm, I'm excited to offer it to the public. Um, unfortunately, you know. Things have been a little tough with, you know, receiving, you know, you know, and it's not anything to do with, 
you know, not bad mouthing Hobie or anything like that. Man, it's just the, the state of the the situation that we're in right now. You know, parts, all these different things. Um, you know, port of entry. You talk about shipping. I mean, everything has just been a huge challenge on the West Coast. So, guys, we do have some boats coming in. Unfortunately, a lot of them have already sold, um, pre-sold. But um, man, I, I think that you know leading into the tail end of 2021 and 2022 it's just going to get better and better with ob for replenishment and uh, being able to provide its its uh, its retailers with with the products that we need to offer to you guys so guys um thanks a lot i appreciate you guys um you know tuning in you know if you haven't subscribed yet you know please subscribe to our channel you know i want to get you guys as much content as possible um you know, I really, really enjoy doing this. It's sometimes it's extremely difficult with everything that we've got going on between the shop and guide service and tournaments and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I, I really try hard to make sure that I get you guys some of the latest, greatest stuff that's out there. So, guys, um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, follow us on, on, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, follow our both our shops. I mean, you know, we, we just love and appreciate all the support because without you, we wouldn't be where we're at today. So guys, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry for the short, you know, the short, um, the short and short of it, but you know, I just wanted to give a real brief overall overview of the actual boat. So other than that, guys, hope to hear from you guys soon. Tight lines.